Yeah, I don't have to look at the camera like that. You look like you're in prison. We are. You're in prison? <laughs> yeah. Who said? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Hey there, welcome back. My name is Pastor Meshach, and we're continuing our way through the Acts of the Apostles. We're back at church, and my two twins, Gabriel and Trinity, are here trying to act inconspicuous. <laughs> Today we're in chapter 8, and we're going to be looking at verse 1 through 8. And so you remember uh, in yesterday's devotional, we finished up the story of Stephen as he, was, um, as he died radiantly. He was stoned to death. That's not funny. He was stoned to death. After testifying, after testifying to um, how God had been at work in Israel and how the people of Israel had a history of rejecting the work of God. Uh, and they kind of, they kind of proved his point in how they dealt with him. He said of them, you guys always kill the prophets. And so when they didn't like what he said, what'd they do? Well, they killed him, another prophet. It ends up with an important um, kind of foreshadowing to an important character that's going to play prominently through the rest of the book of Acts, a man named Saul of Tarsus. And that's where we pick up here. Saul was the one that they laid their coats at. Uh, they laid their coats at the feet of Saul as they were stoning uh, Stephen, and Saul approved of their assault of Stephen. And so the next thing we see is um, Stephen's death kind of begins the persecution of the church. In my Bible, it's called, this, this passage is titled, Saul Ravages the Church. So um, persecution begins, um, Stephen is buried, and then Paul goes around ravaging the church, entering house after house, dragging men and women who are followers of the way into prison. But there's, there's, there's also something, it's almost like a seed that's sown. So the work of God is trying to be stopped by stoning, by persecution, by throwing people into jail. But what happens? Well, it's kind of like if you're trying to get rid of uh, weeds in your lawn um, on a windy day and you just scatter it around. What happens? Well, you wake up and in a few days you have weeds all over the place because instead of plucking it from the root and getting rid of it, you actually unintentionally spread uh, the weeds all over the lawn. And that's what happens here. As the church is forced to um, forced into persecution, people flee to different parts of the uh, the known world at that time. But as they flee, they're going with a message: the message of Jesus Christ, the message of the resurrection. And this kind of unintentionally uh, works in in favor of what God wanted done. Because you remember in Acts chapter one, the very beginning, you guys remember what Jesus said to the apostles. He told them to begin in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Up until this point, their ministry has focused on Jerusalem. And, you know, under the providence of God, sometimes persecution and suffering are the very thing that lead us into obedience. Now, I'm not saying that God uh, wanted Stephen to be persecuted or stoned and the church to be persecuted, but God will certainly use those things to accomplish his purposes. And so we see that as Paul's ravaging the church, the church begins to spread out throughout the known world. As Philip starts moving into Samaria, preaching the gospel, and from this point on, we'll see that the, uh, the Acts of the Apostles is no longer centrally focused in Jerusalem, but it starts to spread wider and wider and wider. And so I think that's, that's um, I don't know, I was just thankful when I read that. Thankful because the work of God cannot be stopped. Right, guys? Yeah. yeah. That's right. So the work of God cannot be stopped. And I think that's important for me to remember in my own life, in the midst of my own suffering, my own minor persecution uh, in comparison to what they faced. But if God has called me to something and that something is disrupted, it doesn't mean that it's over with. But it means that God is going to provide a means to still accomplish his purpose, even in the midst of suffering. Um, and so it's, it's just something to be aware of as life throws us different uh, angles and sets us on different paths. God is still faithful. And at the end of the day, God is going to have his way. Let me say a prayer for you guys. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message. We thank you for the people in the Bible that uh, whose lives testify of your greatness and whose lives speak to us uh, the truth that your greatness can be made manifest in and through our lives. And so, God, we I pray for those who are experiencing suffering right now of any kind, persecution of any kind, internal or external, in the same way that in this chapter that we're reflecting on, in the same way that persecution led to the scattering of the church, let it also lead to your gospel being proclaimed through the scattering, through the suffering, as it did in Acts, let it happen the same way in our lives. Let every experience of sorrow and grief and pain and suffering be something that can be used to the honor and glory of your name and the salvation of your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So next time we're going to be looking at, this is one of my favorite stories in the book of Acts, Simon the Magician. So if you want to look ahead, read Acts chapter 8 verses 9 through 25 and we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>